Tom Wainwright, Narconomics, How to Run a Drug Cartel. In the sea of the global drug industry, where supply, demand, and profits reach astronomical heights, the book, Narconomics, How to Run a Drug Cartel, by Tom Wainwright delves into the intriguing world of drug cartels and their convoluted relationship with governments. The summary outlines the complex dynamics and strategies employed by cartels, while revealing the shortcomings of the United States' war on drugs. This eye-opening journey uncovers the surprising similarities between cartels and legitimate businesses, such as revenue generation through offshoring, product diversification, and advertising tactics. Prepare to gain a unique perspective on how cartels function, adapt and maintain a stranglehold on the drug market. A Flawed War on Drugs The U.S. government's war on drugs has failed to reduce drug production and consumption. By focusing on supply-side attacks like crop dusting, the government has only caused the cartels to shift operations to other countries. Moreover, impoverished farmers are targeted instead of the cartels, and consumers end up paying more for the same amount of drugs, leading to a growth in revenue. This flawed approach does not tackle the real root of the problem, and the drug industry continues to flourish. Legalizing Marijuana for Economic Benefit The U.S. marijuana industry generates an estimated $40 billion annually, with $7 billion coming from the legal market. Legalizing marijuana's economic advantages include weakening drug cartels, generating revenue through taxation, and improving product quality by allowing horticulturalists to experiment with different plants and techniques. The government's supervisory role also ensures consumer safety and offers a variety of products. By focusing on the customer side rather than the supply side, both governments and consumers benefit. Cartels, Competition versus Collusion In the book, we explore how cartels operate, from government relationships to their treatment of each other. Economic theory suggests that cartels can either compete or collude. In Mexico, brutal cartel wars have caused the deaths of tens of thousands of people. In contrast, in El Salvador, cartels collude, which has resulted in a reduction in violence and murder despite high drug prices. Ultimately, collusion appears to be the better option for society, as it results in less violence and murder. Cartel Recruitment Strategies Cartels often recruit new employees from prisons, where inmates struggle to find jobs after release. The Mexican Mafia provides work for new inmates inside the prison, and jobs in trading and smuggling drugs once released. To prevent theft, cartels use a hierarchical structure of generals, captains, lieutenants, and soldiers. This structure ensures that lower-ranking members hold their superiors accountable, preventing abuse of power and creating employee loyalty. Cartel Strategic Social Responsibility Businesses and drug cartels alike demonstrate social responsibility as a strategic public relations ploy to look good and outdo their rivals. Drug cartels market themselves better through decrying drug-related violence in their communities and serving as protectors and patrons filling voids left by failing public services. Offering drug alms or narcolimosnes, paying fees for hired protection, and funding construction of churches and chapels are just some examples of cartels' measures to give back to the community. These actions make them look like heroes despite their unsavory line of business. The connection between cartels and offshoring. The process of offshoring is not just applicable to the production of consumer goods, drug cartels do it too. Cartels take advantage of corrupt governments in other countries to expand their reach and boost profits. Countries like Honduras with weak law enforcement and government institutions are excellent environments for drug cartels. One organization, Transparency International, publishes yearly corruption indexes that rank countries around the world, alerting the international community to countries supporting drug cartels. The reports also provide information for transnational companies looking to invest overseas and influence countries to make changes quickly. Costa Rica has proven to be a better place to invest and do business in than other countries like Guatemala and Honduras, as they were able to lift their corruption score due to the impartiality of its judges and the reliability of police forces. 
Cartels and Franchising This book highlights how drug cartels use the franchise model to expand their businesses and gain financial benefits. The use of franchise models helps them gain greater profits and expand their territory without risking their members and profits. With the use of franchise agents, cartels share profits with local leaders turn franchisees to avoid conflicts, which results in a steady stream of revenue. However, franchising also has its drawbacks, which include revenue loss due to competition within a territory and a decentralization of power that makes it hard to hold someone accountable for mistakes. The Challenge of Legal Synthetic Drugs Synthetic drugs that can be sold legally until they are made illicit pose a significant challenge to governments. Drug manufacturers alter the composition of a banned drug to create a new legal drug with similar effects. This creates a regulatory cycle where governments struggle to keep up with the constantly changing chemical compositions of these drugs. Mark Bowden, a New Zealand drug dealer, made benzylpiperazine, BZP, which was initially intended for use as an antiparasitic agent for cattle. When humans ingested it, BZP created a rush similar to that of amphetamines. BZP was outlawed in April 2008, but drug dealers simply altered the chemical composition of other amphetamines with a similar high, keeping them legal. To address this challenge, some governments have increased safety procedures and implemented legislation to hold drug manufacturers accountable for proving that their drugs are safe. Diversification, Cartels' Hidden Income Cartels have expanded their operations to include people smuggling as it provides greater financial security than drug smuggling. The increase in border security following 9-11 has made people smuggling to the United States an economically lucrative business. Prices for smuggling have risen over the years. International cooperation on this issue is difficult due to varying drug laws around the world. As a result, the director of the White House Office of National Drug Policy in the U.S. has had to take action against marijuana growing and sales abroad, while some states have already legalized it. Wainwright's Narconomics paints a vivid picture of the inner workings of drug cartels, drawing striking parallels to business operations within the legal market. The summary illustrates the multifaceted nature of the drug industry, and its uncanny ability to withstand the failed U.S. war on drugs. Revealing cartels' economic exploitation, cunning tactics, and continuous adaptation, the book challenges conventional wisdom and presents an alternative perspective on the global drug problem. Finally, the summary suggests that addressing the issue of drug consumption is more effective than simply focusing on the supply side. In conclusion, Narconomics provides a distinct, captivating, and thought-provoking overview of the world of drug cartels.